So let's pull the top cover off, let's have a little look inside. There's a bit of dust floating around in here. Quite thick dust. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is definitely old. Got some bulbs in here, which obviously go through to these indicators here, so it's like light pipes go to the front. Old technology. Brilliant. Love it. Got some adjustments in here, transformer, so it's obviously linear supply these days. It's like it's got some test points, this is probably power supply, it's got some test points in there. And it's got a loom running up to the front, up there. And this little distribution point here which goes to these bulbs. So it's all basically contained inside this little box here, apart from the, obviously the power supply stuff. Then we've got some cow points here. Someone's written on these. R212, R213, R214. Making it a bit easier to work on. I think I've got a manual for this. So I managed to pick up a physical manual for this thing, which is always nice. I generally do try and pick up a physical manual for bits of gear which I'm going to be keeping. So I have no plans of selling, or you know, fixing and selling on. And this is the circuit diagram for this thing. It's basically resistors. <laughs> Power supply, probably a very good output quality I'm guessing, with resistors to try and scale it all. Very nice. I do miss having this kind of quality in the manuals when you know you don't get this sort of thing in new gear. You just don't get it. It'd be nice if you did get manuals in new gear like this. You know, you could get in there and fix it in five or ten years' time, or potentially fix it. Unless your main processor's failed. <laughs> no processor in this thing. And that's what the bottom of this thing looks like. Main AC supply, all exposed, so watch out for that. <laughs> Might put some stuff over there so I don't accidentally touch it while moving it around if I've got the covers off it. Not much to it there, is there? And I'm trying to sort of figure out how to get this panel apart because I might need to clean switches inside here. It's possible I need to do that. The manual probably explains how to get it apart. I haven't read that much. The underside looks nice and clean, so it's all the top side, but obviously the slots on the back let all the dust in. Getting into that box could be tricky. It could be easy. Most things are usually made, or well, this era, they're made to be worked on and repaired. So let's power this thing up for the first time. Are we ready for this? <laughs> There's no power being drawn. That's a good start. This is a double knob. I don't know what the other one does yet. We'll find out. <laughs> it says range and polarity here. So I'm guessing the other one's polarity and this one is the ranges. I guess we'll find out. So don't forget we've got this 25 millivolts or so sitting there for noise. Positive. The bulbs lit up. Light tube is working. We're set to zero. Switch it to that one, that's come on. Switch it to that one, that's that one there, come on. So this will do hundreds of millivolts. We're seeing some voltage here now. Okay, well nothing's gone bang yet, that's always a good start. Okay. Well, let's start with the highest range. Seeing 0.1 millivolts, let's go 100 millivolts. Getting 99. Excellent, it looks like it's working. 199, 299, 398, 498, overload, oh. 597, 697, even goes to 10 though, look at that, 10. But we do have a bit of an offset here. Now maybe it needs some more uptime, that sort of stuff, maybe it needs calibrating. I should check this with a different meter, this is obviously barely good enough for this really what we're doing here. Let's do tens of millivolts, there we go, 10, 20, 30, ish, well, oh, 30 jumping around a bit, that's a dirty switch, 40, 50, and a dirty switch, yeah, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Those aren't looking too bad. Did a zeroing, yep, that's looking pretty zero there. One is not really one, it's doing two and a bit. Two, it's doing two and a bit. Three is doing six. Now it's doing three. Dirty switches. These need cleaning. Five, here we go, five. Let's go how many volts there. Let's go that in there. Yeah, six. Seven is doing nine. No. You wiggle. Wiggle, 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 yeah, as Dave says. <laughs> Seven, yeah, okay. So, yep, switch is definitely cleaning. I could have probably just working a bit like that. 
So five was giving us trouble before, wasn't it? Five is now bang on. Six is a bit out. Yeah, let's see that. It's definitely needs cleaning. It's getting better. It's getting better and better each time. So yeah, a bit of cleaning will fix that. So it's definitely dirty switches. So 100 millivolts is working fine. Let's go to microvolts. Just do 10. We already know the switches. This one is working okay. So that's right. Let's go nanovolts. Nanovolts. Hmm. Definitely need more for this. I need to get the signal running. Or potentially even more than that. So I've set up onto my Siglent STM3065X as you can see here. I've done a relative mode so it's zeroed basically. You can see some fluctuation there, a bit of noise coming in and as you would expect. So you're talking about the smallest digit this thing can measure. So let's go positive. You see it's floating around a little bit there so expect to see some floating. Go positive and there we go. It is indeed doing 1000 nanovolts. It does it. So go zero again, so it's output off, should be zeroed around aroundabouts, go negative, and there's minus 1000 nanovolts. So the output's definitely working, that's a good thing. I just need more digits. Like my shirt says, more digits is better. Across the other side of the room, using some Teflon cables I made up some time ago. It's not a great screen on this thing, it doesn't show up very well. It's a bit um, aged. I only just turned this on a few minutes ago, so it's still got stabilisation to go. Number of digits, we want more digits. Eight and a half digits, we already set the eight and a half digits, okay. And you see the value is gradually coming down as well. Do one more update, see, because as this thing's warming up, so it's null that. Then we'll turn this thing on and see what we get. And there we go. It is there, at least we've got next digit. But as this is still warming up, we're going to be getting some drift. It's not bad though, is it? Let's turn the output off again. Give it another update. Yeah, not again. Let's turn another off until they're gone. That's three out. Two out. Okay. My environment here isn't perfect. I do have a lot of radio noise. I've got Wi Fi in here and that sort of stuff, and LED lights, and obviously the electronics on the camera itself and the computers. and So there is a lot of ambient noise in this area. So I try and do these least significant digit measurements. Pretty tricky. Let's hook up the meter here to the test points on the power supply. The unit is powered up. We get 12.1 volts. Let's look for ripple, shall we? Just in case there's a capacitor problem. Now this just take a while to settle down on AC. 1.1 millivolts AC. 1 millivolt. That could also be induced noise. Unplug the cable. So no cables connected to it. What does it settle down to? Just the induced noise is high level that I'm getting from having the cables plugged in. <laughs> but magic. Yeah. I think it's fine. I just installed a short. Let's see what we get with a short across the input. Yeah, 0.4 millivolts. And that will still be induced noise, I'm sure. So we're getting less than one millivolt of noise on the power supply. As this is a precision instrument, does that matter? I need to find reference in the manual. Hopefully there's a reference in the manual somewhere saying what the ripple must not be more than. Um, there's usually some specification, but it must be in there somewhere. I'll have to try and find it. So I'm trying to figure out how to get as a part so I'm cleaning these switches. It was actually fairly straightforward once I figured it out, I think. So I'll take these four screws out the front panel here, which means the whole front can move around. And on the back here, there's one screw that holds this back shield on right in the middle, which was just there. I've undone that. Here's the screw, it's got a long one. That then to slide the shield back. So that will give me access. I'm not going to touch the switches with my hands. And then I can slide this out and hopefully separate the two. Yeah. 
Look at that goodness in there. Whole bunch of resistory goodness. Point one percent resistors. Yeah, these are one percent. These are point one percent. Point one percent. Yeah, lovely. Got well, these ones. This is these say one percent. So these switches need cleaning because this is precision. Leaving dioxin in there may not be a good thing. It may cause leakage. So I'm inclined just to use alcohol and let that evaporate off. Calibration sticker date is the is 1967. Second of well, it could be second of July or the seventh of February, depending on how you interpret it. But it says 1967. So this is 57 years old. Not bad. Bet you can see how accurate it still is. I've got to clean these switches now. So I'm going to put some dioxic gold on a cotton bud and just precisely put it onto these rings, on the slip rings and the contacts on that slip ring. On all of them, because there's four of them each switch. Actually these haven't got that, they've only got the front ones. So that's even easier. So there's two on those switches. So there's two on that one, two on this one, four on this one. And obviously you've got those ones down there too which need doing. Which I'm not worried about so much because that's power switch and polarity, so it's probably not so critical. The position of application of this on those rings and then we'll work it a little bit and that should be all it really needs. Just got to be careful not to get it on the phenolic wafers because it could leak or create electrical leakage on the wafers themselves. So I'm trying to be careful about not having too much going on there. Alright, let's try and get onto that contact just there. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how successful I am with that. These are a gold plate. So, so I'm using the gold one on it. That might be done. Might not. I'll do the next one. Well, I'll finish them all off. Let's turn the power onto it. So I'll move up range. That's fine. We'll turn the power on. The count is set to some nonsensical value. Zero there zero there so that should be zero output we're getting 70 microvolts so it should be 170 or well, 99.7 so there's a bit of a zero or anything there I think but my thing I'm looking for here is whether or not there's any glitching switches now and that looks fine This one of switches was playing up, I think, before. The 50 was playing up, that's looking good. 60, 70, 80 was playing up, yeah, this is looking good now. 10, yeah. Yeah, that's fine now, that's done the job, I think. Yep, clean our switches has done the job, that's looking good. Let's do polarity in case that matters as well. Just check the polarity switch. That's fine. Rangers. Just checking for that playing up. Just got a 10 on here so we can see it more. So that is basically 1 volt. 1 millivolts. 10 millivolts. And those are all looking like they're fine too. So, and then it's negative and the positive, the same thing, just in case it matters. Yeah, perfect. That's working fine. Switch cleaning seems to have been successful. I call that a fix. Well, that's it. It's back together again. It seems to work. The cleaning switches has done the job. It's all behaving nicely now. Calibration could be slightly out. I need to set up some better cables and stuff for this and maybe buy some more test gear so I can actually do nanovolt measurements without too much trouble. Seems I always need to buy more test gear. There's a special thread on the EV blog forum for that. Test Equipment Anonymous. Yes, I'm a member. Check the other videos out down below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Patreon support link over there to help me buy a nanovolt meter so I can calibrate this thing. Alright.